for one of you folks on the crime that this man prosecutes every, every day, my good friend, the Sheriff Rex Coffey. Uh, I thank you for coming to Rex. I thank you for what you do. You do a great job. I mean that. And we know that. Um, I also want to thank my friend, his right hand man, Jack Hurd. That's my best friend out there, Jack Hurd, the Sheriff's Office. That's a good man. He keeps me straight. Uh, I think a commissioner was here. Ruben Collins was here. Commissioner Ruben Collins was here. I think he has to leave. It might be here, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, and then, you know, the, the, the guy that, you know, inspires me, uh, there's no doubt about that, just a, a guy who's a class act, Delegate Peter Murphy. I just want to thank you. He inspires me. He's a real deal. Real deal. I want to thank uh, my good friend, Jason Hopkins. He's the uh, president of the FOP. He's been a good supporter and just a, a, a good, good officer. I want to thank Jason for being here. Uh, representing Northern Dem Democratic Club, Kathy Cashmere. The shady lady, where you at, Kathy? Always here. She's at the first one here. You know I love you. Uh, good friend, president of the fourth and fifth club, Karen Andreas. Where you at, Karen? You got no better friend than Cobb Island. Cobb Island, that's for darn sure. Um, you've got uh, Virginia Benedict with the, uh, the chair uh, woman of the Democratic Central Committee. Virginia, thank you. Thank you for all you do. Al Coleman, my good friend, Democratic Central Committee. I see uh, the, the, the Godfather is here. Uh, there are body parts that float in the Cobb Island Sound there, that little sound. His name is Frank Lancaster, Dangerous Man, Orphan Park Judge. I see Sherry Hancock, Clerk of the Court. I tell you, you can't have a better friend than Sherry Hancock. What a wonderful woman she is. I see you, Gaylord Ho, Gaylord. I appreciate you being here. Gaylord's very active with the community. Folks, thank you for being here, my friend. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm probably leaving somebody out. Someone tell me if you have a huge ego and I left your name out. Anybody? Mary Sue Greisman. Huge ego. Yes, she's an attorney. Folks, um, and again, I, I, I want to just take a, a moment here. I am overwhelmed and I am humbled at the support that's in this room. It is amazing to me that you guys came out. I am absolutely, deeply, deeply appreciative of the support in this room. And I promise you, this is my promise to you, as a candidate, there's not going to be any other candidate, not even you, Rex Cock, is going to work harder than me. <laughs> no one's going to work harder than me. And let me tell you why. I want to make this very clear. I became a lawyer and I went to law school because I wanted to be a prosecutor. I have always felt, and I've always felt this, that and a lot of my, my, my friends, you know, my liberal friends would always say, oh, you know, how can you be a prosecutor? You should be a, a defense attorney and help the indigent, or you should be a, you know, an environmental attorney. And those are all fine professions. But I have always believed that if you believe in justice, if you actually mean that, not the hokey way people talk about it, but you mean doing the right thing, punishing those who, who commit serious crime, who hurt people, but also being fair to those who are innocently accused or those who are just being accused of something for political reasons or just because they, they're, they're on the poor side of things. If you want to do actual justice, there is only one position that can do that, and that is the state's attorney. I believe that. Being a prosecutor, you have the discretion. The judges don't have discretion. Sometimes the police don't have discretion. They get a complaint, they have to take a charge out. It is the state's attorney that can re review a case and make the right call. And that is why I wanted to be a state's attorney. As soon as I got my law degree, Candace, I got offers from firms from Baltimore, from D.C., all over the place. But I wanted to come back to Charles County. This is my home. This is where I was born. This is where I was raised. God only knows where I'm going to die, but my money's on Charles County. This is my home. And when I came back from law school, I wanted to work in Charles County. I was able to do that. I was able to be a state's attorney here. Five and a half years, the best five and a half years of my life. Never took a sick day because I didn't want to be sick. I love being in court every day. And folks, let me tell you, when I got up in front of the, the trial room, in front of a jury, in front of a judge, every time I said Hamad Mateen on behalf of the state, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps because it meant so much to me. And folks, let me tell you something. I've learned so much now on the other side. I've gotten to see the different perspective of it. I've been able to have some success, some financial success you know, with my own private firm, but I give it up in a second to serve the people of Charles County, to serve the citizens of Charles County, to put away the violent criminals, to be a fair, tough, and smart prosecutor that the people of Charles County deserve. I want to be your state's attorney, and I promise you, with your support, with you telling your friends, with you telling your family to vote for me, that you go out there and knock on doors for me, you tell your friends about me, you make phone calls for me, you wear my t-shirts, which are on sale, I believe. Uh, you, you, I, I gotta do what I gotta do here. You do what you can to help me out. I promise you, I will be your state's attorney.
attorney. I will be the prosecutor for the people, and I will bring justice and fairness to Charles County. Thank you very much, and God bless all of you.